Um, I just want to say that um, snail farming is lucrative. It is, it is good. As of today, you can sell a single snail for about 10 cities, 15 cities. And then um, it will surprise you to know that there are companies or businesses that are willing to buy them in huge quantities. And that is why you need to scale up and make sure your farm is, is growing. All right, so I'm still here with um, Katie Samo. We are still on this farm, the Edu Green farm. Yeah, yeah, still looking at the snow farming. You can check out the previous videos. We've done a couple of videos on that, so you can go and look at it. In this video, looking at the farm management practices when it comes on a farm, what he does. We also look at some differences between the snails, the Akatina, Katina, Akatina Maginata, and the other ones that when it rains, it comes around. Yeah, so that's what we're going to look at in today's video. So this video is sponsored by Tunde Land Land Farms. They are into farm management and investment um, services. So what they do is they have a cassava farm or the investment is mainly in cassava farms. So they are watching me and are interested in investing in cassava. This is a good opportunity for you. So one way of their investments is you now buy, buy farmland from their end. They grow their farm, their cassava farm for you and give you a return. They cultivate, uh, manage and harvest everything for you and give you a return of between 31 to 33 percent or the second option you have is you buy their cassava packages and they also don't want to also get a return of between 10 and 11 percent so you'll be at the comfort of your home you own a cassava farm have this form of investment done for you for more or detailed information about it you can visit their website todaylandiran.com every information that you need everything will be in the description side of the video get yourself some investment i know some people are into the corporate sector you might not have time to do your own farm management things or to start your own farm to be on the farm manage everything yourself you can reach out to them every detailed information that i share with you is on their website you have a breakdown of what they do so that the form you're supposed to complete anything question that you're supposed to ask to you can um reach out to them contact them for more information about it everything is detailed, everything is well explained to you to get access to and buy so yeah reach out to them visit their website website tundelearningrun.com and check out some of this information read out their terms everything that you want to know about it's on their website and details for you to understand as well video. so yeah some more please Hi, take us so through. you're welcome once again yeah um i want to show you um what, what we basically do now i want to say that because snails love humidity um initially we started this farm with um dry plantain leaves okay um uh, by to, um totally covering the, the, the snails because they want to be hidden from, from sunlight or light in general yeah because they are nocturnal um, but we realized that the plantain leaves easily breaks down into into compost and then forms part of the soil later very fast so we decided to um, go into into cocoa leaves what okay. has helped us so far we realized that the cocoa leaves um, spend a, a longer time um with water and then the soil together before it breaks down uh, to form to part of, of, the soil. of the soil okay that explains why there are cocoa leaves on all the cages. yes and then the the thing is that we treat we treat the leaves before we put them here okay so we boil them make sure the water is boiling uh before we introduce the leaves into into the water and then make sure it, it kills any germs or, or eggs eggs of any insects that we are likely to introduce into the pen. Okay. Okay. So make sure you shoot the uh, the cocoa leaves, ensure that they are not on the uh, insects around them that would yes. attack the yes. uh, snails. Yes. Okay. So um, usually when when we come here in the morning, uh, we first uh, take out uh, the feeding, the feeding from the previous night. Okay. And then. Um, I would want to check if there are any new insects, if there are any ants. Inside. So, so because because it's, it's a huge farm. Yeah. I mean, when I when I come out, I want to make sure the water that I put in there. We, and then people do not even know that snails love to drink water. 
Because I like even know. So there are people who just water the, the soil and then will not put any amount of, of water, water in there. So we have this flat, almost flat surface that we put water into so that the snails do not even drown in, in, in the water. Okay. So we we check if, if the water is okay. Sometimes because when you come, the reason why the, the plate is dry is because at night they would want to use this as their swimming pool sometimes <laughs> while while drinking it. So they will spill everything and and uh, and then spill it in, into the into the pen. So usually I'll this is how I search for any pests. I'd want to check if there's anything we forgot to take out. Um, I'd want to see if there are any insects. You do this, and then um, as 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 a farm owner, this this is a, a sign. See, so you see pests and things that are likely to harm to harm your snails. Okay. And then you can quickly um, solve these issues so they don't escalate into anything crazy. Um, I'd advise that if you want to use your bare hands to 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 attend to the to the pen, you would want to wash it so that you don't introduce any uh, okay. diseases from from one pen to the other, or you just put on your gloves and then uh, work work in the pens. So when you do this, you make sure there are no insects harming the snails. You cover the snails again with with your dry leaves, and make sure they are they are they are fine. Um, at night, um, around three to four p.m., uh, before they come out to feed, you would want to water them so that again the soil feels fresh. They also have the feel of the forest where it rains. Yeah. So they feel like it's just rain, so they need to come out to come feed. And that also motivates them to come out to to um, eat. Okay. Okay. I also want to show you um, the eggs of uh, Akatina Akatina. No, so this farm you have you mainly do Akatina Akatina. Yeah. So we have we have the Wapa, but um, we also have a small amount of Pobre, which is the Akatina marginata. Okay. So I wanted I want to show you how the how the Akatina marginata um, eggs look like. We are not supposed to touch this with our bare hands, but this is uh, to make you understand the size of the, the Catina marginata. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's when they hatch, like this. How like so? Th this is how big it is. Okay. Which is the snails that the Nigerians prefer, so which is the cobra. The cobra. Yes. Okay. So this pen contains all the cobra. No. Um. So we 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 kept some eggs over here. Usually we have we have a, a hatchery. But currently, the the farm is is populated with with snails, okay. so we had to improvise and put um, some of the eggs at uh, where um, we have um, other snails. But that is that is only when you have um, some amount of experience. If you if you do not have a lot of experience, I won't advise you to mix them with with the mature snails. Okay. You'd want to separate them and have your own hatchery. Um, I've seen some farmers. Um, Create the hatchery in a in a pack. What we usually put our food in as as food pack. Yeah, you may mention of that in a few videos. Yes, that yes, like it's, that. It's, and even bowls. I mean, they cannot they cannot eat through bowls, but uh, don't limit them to a bowl. Create a good uh, environment for them. Um, give them one pen. I mean, the eggs. Give them a whole pen, and then give them a whole pen. And then uh, you just dig about, um, let's say, four centimeters into the into the soil. Also, the difference is that the the hatchery, the soil shouldn't be too loamy. It should be more a little bit sandy than loamy. Is there now, reason for that? the reason is is because the the hatchlings are not too strong. The loamy is is a little bit heavy for them. So if they come out out of out of the shells when they hatch. It will be difficult for them to climb on top of the soil. Interesting. So if you leave, if you lose, if you use um, the normal loamy, obviously you come back and find out that some of them hatched, but they died under the soil. Mm. So that's why you don't you don't dig too deep. You dig about just four centimeters deep. You put the eggs there. Usually you fetch the eggs when you come in the mornings. You see the the eggs that that have been laid. You fetch the eggs with spoon and a plate. And then sometimes if you want to keep the eggs safer, you put some amount of soil on top of the plates before you, you the fetch the, 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 the eggs onto the, 
onto the the plate and now you you are able to also count the eggs when you do this process so you're able to tell and mark that that snail that this particular snail gave me 450 eggs then this snail gave me 600 eggs so then you'd want to pamper that 600 <laughs> <laughs> because because that's 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 your cash cow. He's giving you six hundred eggs. It's very important. You should treat him well. Yeah. You should make sure he's eating well. It means he's very he or she is very uh, fertile. fertile. So um so uh, one last thing I want to find out is mm. how long does it take when they lay the eggs? Does it take for them to hatch? Uh between between twenty one days, which is three weeks to four weeks. You should and uh, sometimes if you're lucky you would have them hatch less than three weeks. But the standard is 21 days. 21 days. Yes. And what, how important is it for you to take the eggs out onto a hatchery and not leave them for them to hatch Okay. Themselves? So um, you would realize that if you leave them, or uh, if you leave them in the pen with the with the mature snails, when they are when they are um, wandering about at night, they would burrow into the into the place where you have buried the eggs, and they would break some of them. It is not intentional, but they will break some of them and then you will lose your your snails. So what I was also trying to say is that when you separate them and put them in a hatchery yeah. and then four centimeters deep, you don't you don't just throw sand over them. You just you need to sprinkle the sand okay. so that it's, it is still loose for them that when they hatch, they can easily climb on oh. top of the soil. And also when it comes to watering, you do not water it too much. You just water it a little bit. Okay. With a with a water can, you water it a little bit, not as much as the way we water the mature snails, okay. and then just to keep the 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 moisture around the eggs. You know, when they lay the eggs, there's this moisture that's around them. The eggs feel like a gel. Okay. So, in order for you to keep the humidity around the eggs, you water it a little bit, and then you realize they'll come out very beautiful. And if you want to um, uh, understand how many days it took them to hatch and you know do your own analysis as an agribusiness person you would want to um tag where wherever you bury them you put um uh, some some form of tag on the dates that you put them there how many eggs they were right. and then when you are expecting for them to hatch, for them to hatch. It's just like you having a rabbit and you keeping stock of right the time they'll give right. you where you cross and stuff. yes okay. so after 21 days if you realize that they haven't hatched i mean you can bury it back or if you realize that some of them have hatched, it's likely that some of them also died. They didn't even hatch at all. So you can count the number of eggs that did not hatch. That's a lot of work. Yeah. But I mean, that's what would inform you of what to do and what not to do moving forward. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So um, let's look at the difference in the snails. Yes. Uh, before that, let me show you the the eggs for the Nwapa, which is the Katina Katina. Okay. Okay. So if you come here, you'd realize that oh, it has more. No, never, never touch your eggs. But this is for for you to to learn something. That's why. So this is how small they are when it comes. That's why you're stressing on the other one right. to look at the size of it. Right. So this is the Akatina Akatina. They are relatively very small. Even the Akatina Fulica. The one that um, when it rains, the yeah. one that when it rains in your home, you see them. Their their eggs are much smaller than this, and they look they look whiter than this. Okay. Okay. So, um, that would that would inform you that I mean, when when we started the farm earlier on, one time we came and then we found about about a thousand of of some beautiful eggs, and we thought those were akatina, 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 not knowing. When we were purchasing um, the stock for the yeah. farm at some point, they sneaked in one Akatina Fulika. Yeah. And the Akatina Fulika had given us so many eggs. So you're thinking it was. So I was thinking it's, it's the Akatina Akatina. Eventually, when I paid a close attention to it, I realized that it was not in Wapa. And we disposed all of it off. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's interesting. How, but how do you teach us how to know the difference between so the snails? Yes, yeah, so when you're going to buy. You are going to get some stuff for your farm. You can go to determine that. So um, these these are two snails, <laughs> but I have I've had people want to um, differentiate the snails by 
by the color of their shells. Yeah, because I've also heard that. Yes, but I want to debunk that today. The 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 thing is that um, sometimes you can tell from their from their shells, but depending on where the the the, the snail has been uh, living for a while, would determine the color of the shell. Okay. So usually the Nwapa have have this zebra color where you see the black and the brown or the black and white around it around it but if you look closely you realize that this part of this particular snail also looks like like a different color yeah and yeah. because it has a lot of depth on it you might not you really tell. tell so when you go to the market and you are purchasing in wapa you might get a snail that has almost even the zebra uh, coloring on the shell but it is um Pobre. Pobre, or what we call the Akatina maginata okay um if you if you look here you'd realize that this particular snail which is a uh, dakatina maginata um one of the distinct thing is you see that the enwapa has a pointed end on the shell mm -hmm. and here it looks it looks rounder but sometimes when the when the akatina maginata is is very matured or very big it almost looks like this and it's very uh, confusing to tell and if you look closely, you realize that it almost has the zebra thing. Um, so yes. So if you don't, if you don't pay a close uh, look at it, especially if you're buying about 500 snails or 100 snails, you can't, you can't look at it uh, very close before you buy, because sometimes you're buying in a hurry as well. So you might count it as, as in Wapa. But the way you can easily tell the difference between in Wapa and Pobre is that you, if you look at the, the meat itself, if you look at the meat itself, you realize that the Nwapa has this black and white spot spots yeah. on the on the skin. Uh, whereas the Pobre or the Akatina Maginata has a clearer skin. So if you pay a close attention to the difference in skin, you would know which one is Nwapa, the African giant snail, and then which one is Pobre, which is the Akatina Maginata. So this is how you can differentiate them. You said the Nigerians prefer this one. Nigerians prefer this. This this one, the meat is tougher. Okay. Should we compare that to Willy? <laughs> Willy? <laughs> oh, then it's quite tough. <laughs> oh, no, no, no not that tough. Like I'm, just, I'm okay. just making a joke out of it. But okay. relatively, this has a tougher meat than this. The Ghanaians love this a lot. So, so, so yeah, this, this is how you can, you can tell the difference. Nice, nice. That but but the, the thing is that this one will give you eggs at even six months old and this will give you eggs at uh, maybe about a year and a half the difference is that this one can give you about 32 eggs that's a matured akatina maginata snail okay. will give you about 32 eggs or let's say 25 eggs at a time whereas the african giant snail which is the akatina gatina can give you up to 600 eggs at a time so i mean if you have these figures you can do your your analysis this one will give you early eggs, but this will give you late eggs, but it's more. more. Right. I think the, one of the main difference, and like Ghanaians and Nigerians watching, you can, you can, um, you can tell. Nigerians are like, Ghanaians are more relaxed. It's Nigerians, everything is quick, 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 quick. <laughs> so yeah, maybe that also shows. Mm -hmm. You go early, you give eggs early. They want everything fast. But Ghanaians are more laid back, more relaxed than little. That also influences our choice of snows. So let me know in the comment section what you think. All right. I also wanted to um, show you um, some of the things to look out for. So sometimes when you go to the market to buy snail, uh, make sure that you buy a snail that cannot fit into its shell. That cannot fit into its shell. Into its shell. Okay. If you are going to stock up your farm, make sure you buy a snail that cannot fit into its shell. Now, when if a snail cannot fit into its shell, obviously, what does it mean? It means the we can say the snail is obese, right? But that's not what it means. <laughs> We're trying to say that it's it's healthier. So if you look at this snail, it's it's alive, but it is not big enough to fit into its shell. So if you come to your farm and then you do your sorting, you would realize that there are snails that are that are losing weight. So you would want to separate them. Um, here in our farm, we have a part of the farm that um, we call the nursery, where we we take all the ill. Um, snails yeah, and we keep them there and give them a, a special treatment and also if they have developed any sickness you wouldn't want them to mix 
with, with the other snails that are healthy so that they don't transfer whatever disease it is okay so um the same thing is that um if you go out to buy your snails buy snails that are healthy because if you buy unhealthy snails it can cost you your life um also if you do not feed your snails very well a lot of um a lot of snail farmers would ask you that i have this particular snails in my farm that have this wax um, around them around them and and then they stay there for about two months three months they're not eating it's because they are not happy in that space well i also want to say that it is natural for them to go on that break it is called isolation okay which in the forest zones um they go on this period when there's no food especially during the dry season they cover their 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 their, their opening with this wax and then they stay there until um, the drought is over and, and then they, they can come, come out to come and feed now if if on your farm you have the same thing happening it is normal however if you have that relationship with your snails you'd realize that they shouldn't go more than two weeks or maybe three weeks they shouldn't go more than three weeks on this break if they go more than three weeks on this break it means probably you're not feeding them well maybe they're not getting enough uh, calcium maybe the soil is not comfortable for them or they are fed up with the food they are giving exactly they are not happy with the feeding maybe you know a whole lot so you look out for uh, things like this and then you pay close attention to it but when they are on this period make sure you still put food in there and make sure you cover them well with the with the leaves however do not disturb them do not touch them to uh to to wake them up this one for instance because we touch it is waking up it is getting out of out of activation so uh you cover them properly with leaves keep them moist uh make sure you prepare the the environment health um comfortable for them so that when they eventually want to uh, stick out their head and find out if things are better they come out to to a better con uh, conditions and and then and then feeding okay all right what i want us to look at looking at it um the disease that affects snails mm. what are some of the diseases that affect snails and how can they be prevented or be um be cured of okay so um currently um we do not really have um a medicine for for the snails i've i've uh, had uh, some farmers talk about vaccination there's no vaccination for snails what you can do is the calcium thing but when it comes to a degree there are things that i have discovered that help me okay let me give you the secrets the thing is when you get your snails from wherever you you buy it to stock your your farm now before i even go there if you want to put anything in your snail farm go natural don't ever go artificial don't go and buy any chemical to come no nothing everything must be natural fresh so when you bring your snails from wherever you went to buy it and you're about to stock your farm yeah get a bowl of water get moringa the leaves a lot of it put in the water and then um uh, do like like you're washing you do it in such a way that you have the green come into the the water, water. take out the, the the debris out of out of the water uh -huh. leaving the green thing and then you wash your snails in the moringa water you can put the snails there for about three minutes make sure they come out and maybe have a taste of of the moringa and then take them out and then keep them and then i mean you can introduce them into the pens okay um that is a booster for them that would uh, reignite them you can also use this same method when you realize that the snails are not really eating not when they are in activation mm -hmm. but when they are they are okay they are maneuvering but they're not really eating you can use this method and then trust me if you pay attention to that particular night you realize that they will eat well, better than than previous days okay. um sometimes too if you want to um sanitize the pen uh there's something we mix with, with the bowl of water <laughs> and then you sprinkle in the pen just like you you sprinkle water to to moisten up the soil you sprinkle in the farm i mean on the in the pen and then ants will run away from okay insects will run away other insects you don't want to run away because sometimes people ask that if i have an ant infestation do i have to take out all my snails and all my snails and take out all the soil 
no, you don't have to do that always. Sometimes you have to do it, but sometimes uh, you also you can also apply this water mixed with uh, certain leaves, and then realize that the ants are running away, and then that also uh, boosts the energy of of the snails, and they come out to eat. Okay. 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 So let's continue the farm management. Um, as you are saying, so always when they come, you check to take out the leftover foods. Yes. Um, snails that are not doing too well, you separate them. Um, snails that um, during the night they fell from climbing. Some of them fall, fall at night and then they, they break their shell. Yeah. Okay. So when they break their shell, usually every snail farmer will tell you that when a, when a snail uh, shell is broken, it means it's dead. Even if it's alive, you know it's, it's not going to survive. It will die. Yeah. But here we have a solution to that. There are a couple of things we do and then the shell will heal and okay. then they stay alive. So you would, you would, uh, watch out for these things that are happening in, in the pen and then um, maybe you want to make some drastic decisions after uh, looking at the soil and things that are going on welcome Talk. to tundelani Rock farms limited the home of farming and processing of farm produce into high quality food product we produce food with 100% care. We have 1,200 acres of land available for you. These are land that do not have any known government acquisition or any family conflicts surrounding them. We would give you your contract of sale once you purchase the land. You also have the land survey documents and the land allocation. Then we have the certificate of occupancy document, which is popularly called the CFO. While the paperwork process is going on, you can begin cultivation on your land. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to serving you. Thank you.